There's a couple of different ways of making it. I like to make it with an egg. But if I'm gonna make it with an egg, I make it with the egg. And it has to be eaten like within like a couple of hours. Don't uh, don't make it with an egg and then store it like for three days. All right. If you're gonna make it with an egg. egg make, eat, eat, eat the egg right now. All right. Now with the salad, what we did was <coughs> we took the um, the whole romaine lettuce. And we took off the dead stuff off the top and the dead outer leaves, and we cut it down in, huh? in half lengthwise. The flat sides we put down. Now remember when we do the onion, we cut through, mm -hmm. but not the root end. So the root end stays intact. We cut until they're one inch dice pieces, right? Cameron did that, right? Yeah. Didn't she do a good job on that? Isn't yeah. that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Now, there, there's a school of thought that says, no, tear your lettuce, tear your lettuce, because then it doesn't bruise so much. If you're using a sharp knife and you're cutting through that myth with it, that says tear your lettuce because it's not gonna bruise so much is completely opposite. You're gonna bruise it twice as much tearing it than you are from cutting it with a beautiful sharp knife. Well, you're cutting through the cell, and the cell comes apart just like that, right? Okay, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we spin that. We have a salad spinner here. Everyone has a salad spinner at home? Yes. This wet, soggy lettuce is no good. So we're gonna go ahead and just spin this and finish spinning that if you would. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take some garlic here. And I like to add a lot of garlic. I increase the amount of garlic in my recipe, personally. Now, the, my recipe only has, what, three cloves? Mm -hmm. I use about six, personally. It says three cloves in there? Mm -hmm. Actually, you only have, yeah. One. For the dressing, only one clove. One big clove? I don't know. Do about five. Caesar, it's <laughs> huh? garlic. Why not, right? Yes. For, for me, I, I learned how to make Caesar dressing from the Mater D at, at the plaza for the Oak Room. And I'm telling you, Caesar salad table side in the Oak Room at the plaza is like $450,000 a year in, in revenue just from Caesar salad alone, from romaine lettuce and leaves. Wow. And, you know what I mean? It's a lot of money. And that was back in the day, right? Okay. Like almost a half a million dollars just for Caesar salad only. All right, that's a lot of Caesar salad. Anyway, he said that your mouth should be literally in pain. <laughs> After you eat the Caesar salad, your mouth should be like, <gasps> and what is it hot from? Is, it, is there anything spicy in there? Garlic. No. Garlic. Just garlic and salt. That's it. And um, we need some uh, cheese. Okay. Not sure if I, yeah, we got, and uh, Dijon mustard I don't see here either. Okay. Yeah, mustard. I know, I don't see it out here though. Oh. Romano cheese. Yeah, Roma Three The Romano cheese is like, um, it's a Parmesan cheese that has a lot of salt in it. Oh. It's a pecorino. It's a pecorino means it's uh, made from uh, sheep's milk cheese. Oh. Made from sheep's milk, not cow's milk. Now, the best cheese on the planet probably is, uh, comes from that portion of Italy. It's called Parmigiano Reggiano. Reggiano, right? And, uh, and it's, it's, um, it's just an amazing cheese, right? The Reggiano, Parmigiano, Reggiano. I love to oh my eat God! That. Just totally. Yeah, just like, just like that, right? The salt mm -hmm. in, in, so the, has little crystals of salt inside and stuff like that. They have to add enough salt to that because they age it for so long that you don't want any bacterial growth, and the salt will retard the bacterial growth in there, and all that and, and stuff. So it has enough salt, but then the salt crystallizes in there. And what they do is when they separate the curds from the whey, they take the uh, the curds. And they, and they use that to make the cheese, and they take the whey, and they feed that to the pigs, and they make the Reggiano Parma, I mean the, uh, the prosciutto de Parma, that there way. There you are, Sean. Oh, thank Did you, you hear so about much. the Parma shortage because of the earthquake last year? Oh, is there a Parma shortage? Oh, there's... Supply and demand? There's, like, whole, like, large factories prosciutto? just destroyed. They, they, like, dedicated, like, certain, like, firemen just to save the Parmesan cheese. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> because they ate wow. it so long. I know somebody. When, when does <laughs> I didn't. I didn't hear Just that. Just the same apartment. Uh, 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 there was a joke that they made for this this fire force that was going along after the earthquake. This knife is not dirty. It's it's a carbon steel knife, right? Is this too much garlic, you think? No. no. Somebody keep an eye on the stove. Make sure we don't burn yeah. anything. Okay. Oh, 
Hello? Anybody home? All right, so put a little salt on there and then we go like this, right? Paste. Uh, Make a paste. Uh, Did I show you this? Yes. Yeah. You want to do this on your cutting board right before you do your cantaloupe, honeydew, pineapple, <laughs> strawberries? No. Different course. So the salt is helping with the Helping paste. with the, the make the paste, yeah. All right. But now I have lemon juice. I'm going to put my egg in there. You know what we'll just do? Okay. Yes. Who can use a whisk? Just gonna do a yolk only. You do a whole egg. I'm just gonna do the yolk. So it's going to be raw egg. So raw egg right in there. Did you have a whisk down there, Mark? No, I need Would one. Would you like one? Yes, please. Little uh, little Dijon mustard. Now I got. Some stuff. I got some uh, lemon juice. Some people like to put some sort of acid in there. Uh, we can put anchovies in there. Yeah. I don't put the anchovies until later. Ew. <laughs> so far it's Dijon and um, yolk. And how about getting, uh, it's not salmonella. Everybody that says ew when, you, when, when you eat anchovies, when, when, you, when you say anchovies, yeah. has to eat one. <laughs> You make the paste the same way that you made the uh, garlic paste? So I smash them? No, uh, yeah, well, them. yeah. Just oh. chop it. It's gonna, it's gonna mash up on its own. No. No bones about it here. Alright? Now, it's gotta have some salt in there. It also has to have a little, little water. A little bit of water right in there. Whose water is this? It's mine. <laughs> Electrolyte and hand. It's dehyenized. Go for it. Alright, we'll just spit it right in there, right? Yeah. Cheers, you guys. <laughs> I use we use the deionized water when I when, I, when we make ice blocks. You know that, right? For the for the ice sculpture. Oh. Yeah, because it's more dense. It doesn't have bubble in it. More dense, yeah. All right. So now what I do is I, I want to add the oil to this in order to um, form the emulsification. Hold that. Sure. So I add it in a slow, steady stream. Now the key with this is that. When you're making a mayonnaise, aioli, uh, making a vinaigrette or whatever, hollandaise, if it's warm, right? When you add a little bit of the oil, what's happening is the oil wants to separate from the water and the eggs and everything else that's in there, right? Now, the salt helps to denature the protein so that the protein gets to be, right, thinner, right? And the eggs, I mean, the, the oil is positively electrically charged. And what happens is through agitation, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take those things that will normally repel one another and you're gonna flip it over so that they pull together. Basically, what you wanna do is you wanna do this. You wanna add one drop of oil. At the time, so I can make mayo. No, nope, add one drop. And then stop and mix for at least 30 seconds or until you say the alphabet or happy birthday. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, O, C. You are Am I getting some on you there, Gita? No, that is Now you can dump the oil in there and you're not going to break this because you've already begun the emulsification. Okay, that's the key. Someone told me that trick in 1985. I have not broken a, a, a vinaigrette, a hollandaise, a dressing, a butter sauce ever since then. Have not. It's the drop and stop method. Drop and keep, keep whisking but stop pouring. Now you can pour the stuff in there and you're not gonna, but you want it to emulsify accurately, so go ahead and, uh, because what you're doing is basically, essentially if you looked under a microscope, hold that, you got um, you got the, the protein particles are, are, are breaking down and they're, 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 they're forming little globules, tiny little microscopic globules of oil. And each, around each droplet of oil is this surrounding thing of protein. And they're suspending within one another, all on top of one another, like this. Okay, and they're not trying to get away from one another. They're not trying to hurt one another. They're, not, they're trying to just, they're just hanging out with one another now. All right, but you want to do that slow and steady. Agitation. And as you're in the oil, it's getting thicker, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to do this by hand versus a blender. Like no, you can do a blender. No, I mean, if you're doing dressing for 1,400 people, you're using blender. a blender. You're using a, a big, huge Hobart mixer, yeah. humongous one. Yeah. 
What about the What we would do is we would say, okay, each person is gonna get two ounces of salad dressing per person. You got 450 people, so you go 450 900. times two is 900 ounces divided by 128, which is the amount of ounces in a gallon. That's how many gallons we need. See what I mean? Mm. So it's math. And it's funny because of the fact that when I was in high school and stuff, I used to say to myself, oh, I don't need to know math. I'm gonna be a chef. I already know what I'm gonna be. Mm. I don't really need to pay attention in this class. This is math. Forget it. Are you kidding me? Use math all the time. English, I didn't need to know that. Are you kidding me? I need to know language arts all the time when I'm doing my, I'm saying that out loud so I got my senior in high school girl over here. <laughs> right? Is that getting thicker? Yes. And thicker? Yes, it is. Wow. How much oil? One cup? You know what? You add enough oil until you, when you taste it, it balances. It's okay. really good, all right? And then I'm going to add so the, uh, the lemon that? juice. Huh? Is that oil cold when you use it? No. 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 Oh. A little less than full. Right. Wow. This doesn't seem likely to come from TJ. It's amazing. TJ? Yeah, this Mexico. came from Tijuana. Trader Joe's. Huh? Trader Joe's? No, Tijuana. Tijuana, Mexico. That's where the, it was originated. Salad, Caesar salad was, was invented in Tijuana. You know that? Not Italy? Not Italy. Oh. Not Italy. I'm not sure if it was the Italian guy in Tijuana, but it was yeah, in Tijuana. You have to ask the food historian so over here. And we need some... Who's the food historian? Yeah, everything everything you know? Yeah, everything 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 everything